You're listening to Beauty, Strength, and Dominance, the official podcast of Lingerie Fighting Championships. And now, here's your host, Michael Lutkin! Alrighty, folks, welcome back to a special watch along edition of the LFC podcast. Joining me is a woman who made her debut at LFC 35 Booty Camp 3D, who two years it has been since this amazing event, the Booty Camp 3D series, which yours truly made his ring announcing debut. This one over here made her LFC debut, the one, the only Miss Laura Frazier. Laura, it's been two years, and are you ready to watch back your LFC debut? As ready as I can be. <laughs> Oh my goodness. So full disclosure here, folks, before we watch this and do a little commentary and really talk about the spiz odds here. So it's funny because I remember going into this, first of all, nervous as hell, if you will. I don't know. How are you feeling going to this? Were the nerves kicking in or what were your initial thoughts? Because here's what's funny about it. I love meeting new people. And I'll tell you straight up now that I've known you for two years, not only love and respect for you, but you're also a cool ass human being. But I look at it from the stance too as well. I was excited to see you because I knew you did LFC Madness before this, and then when you were announced, I'm like, oh, that's the, that's the girl with the apple and the and the uh, and the cosplay and the Halloween stuff. I thought that was very cool, like you would fit right in. And then knowing more about you with professional wrestling to where we are today, I gotta say it's great to see you just doing your thing, thing and shining and doing the best that you can be and being the best representation of your presentation. So from your journey there to where we are now. Were you nervous going into this? How were you feeling going into the event? Because it was a big event, Halloween on a Sunday. It's 2021. We're still during COVID time period. I mean, there was not a lot of people as there was for LFC 36, but there was a good amount of people there to see some LFC action to be entertained. So what were your thoughts going into that day? I was definitely super nervous. This was like my first uh, live like combat sports situation ever. So like I've been training for a while because of the pandemic kind of delayed me debuting because there was nowhere to debut. (laughs) So I was really nervous, but um, I figured, you know, like I've been doing this, I've been training for this for a while now. Okay. It's like time to time to show what I've been working towards. Well, I'm going to say this. Here's what's funny about it, too. So going into this and your opponent being the one the only Veronica, the VP pain, but shout out to her because this that one over here just had twins. And first of all, the cutest babies that you'll ever see if you follow on Instagram. Shout out to Veronica from becoming a mom. That's a foundation. That's wonderful. Family is everything. So I got to say going into for her, this was her second bout, man. She had just debuted at LFC 31 booty camp. The second one back in 2020 and earlier that year against Jenny Bloody Valentine, which landed her a DQ win. Now, here's what I'm thinking here. Again, early 2021, there was nobody there. It was also in the FSW arena. More people here for this one. I think going against her, you being the what the overall consensus and general consensus of LFC Booty Camp is, it's a prospect against a veteran. And I got to say, as soon as I saw that match be announced on the Kizard here, I'm like, Okay. You know, I'm cu- I was curious to see what you do because again, you were a newcomer, but also at the same time, I'm like, you're in there with a vet and Veronica, I'm going to say this for you, what you've seen her on the Indies, what you see, she's a pro man. Like she is a true, absolute pro consummate professional. She's vicious. Yep. Vicious. Definitely a vet. Definitely a vet. Definitely been at this far longer than me. And I think what you also see here, folks is <sighs> Probably one of the most interesting bouts on this card and why I bring this up to you as well, because your girl was not happy with the result and there was a lot of hoot nanny, if you will. Yes, I'm using that word. There was a lot of hoot nanny and hoopla, if you will, that also transpired in the social media, which we'll talk about at the end as we watch this. So enough talking, more action. Are you ready to get into this, Miss Laura Frazier? Sure am. Oh boy, here we go. All right. Here we go. It is. Veronica Payne in the black and maroon. Lauren Ceccarelli in the green and black. Here we go. Nice old. Yeah, nice play play. Play. Okay, here we go. Ah, oh, look at nice. that. A toss there. Unbelievable. Work there. Now immediately to the back. Working on the That's very sick. It is, but like the class can be a base. Dominant yeah. position right yeah. here. Yeah. Left arm yeah. is under the neck. Yeah. She is squeezing yeah. right now. Ceccarelli in a lot of trouble. I know the show. She's got the. 
thumbs up there. She's doing okay, but that choke is in tight. Yeah. There's yeah. a lot of trouble here. Tense moment here. Checkerelli's in a lot of trouble early on, but she turns oh, inside and now she's going to stop. Hit the pause button for a second here. A lot of people don't realize, like, loyal fans as well being the sponsor of this. Like, I think this was like the second or third time that we'd see loyal fans here. And just a little pause for the cause here, folks. The snap mare and the choke was also really good for the fact that we just get to see a lot of the basics here. Like, a lot of them go out the gate, but y'all started off really, like, psychology-wise. But it just it fit just because it really set the tone for what we would get with this bout. Just had to add that little commentary there as we get back to it. Here we go. Payback, also, shout out to Remy Marcel from FSW being the referee for this. He did an amazing job on the show. I know this was his first appearance. Oh, but let's able to turn it over. Big punches from the top here. You see Checkerelli covering up well. Just right hands coming in over. Kept over having to remind me to protect myself. I was like, yeah, let punch me in the face. The oh, backstabber yeah. is the best part. I'm sorry, but like the backstabber came out of nowhere. It's the simple things that popped me. I was not expecting backstabber. He had viciousness just right to the punch, right to the ground game, man. She did not let up on you. No, no, she did not. Do not turn your back on a vet. No. Pain is delivering the pain for sure. It's VP doing it with a choke coming oh, in. Oh, that is in deep. That is in deep. I don't see a tap. Oh, my That's got to be close. Oh, that's cranking it. Wow. Check oh, rally saved by the bell. First round is done, man. I was saved by the bell. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. We're not talking about the new class of the college years, but you were saved by that bell. I'm a dark, I know, folks. Gets to the body shots in the corner. Here she comes. This killer with the roundhouse kick. Oh, my goodness. Any wheel kick just misses. Catches the front kick. Elton Benjamin. Dragon whip, yes. Straight out of here comes the pain. Bring world's greatest tag team, baby, yes. now on top, pounding away with big punches. I think we need to reclassify her as a striker, not oh, just a grappler. That was she amazing. Is not a grappler. That is the highest yeah. level of striking. Yeah, I should have said I was oh, more of a striker. Oh, well. <laughs> oh, hold on. We're getting to my favorite part. And I think you know what's coming up here because you pull out the dragon whip, you pull out backstabbers. There's a kick to the knee. It's coming soon. We'll talk about it when we get to there. But this was nice, man. I saw the arm bar, almost like a Fujiwa arm bar style, rolling back with it, the overhead. I was trying. Like, you did not want to let me. <laughs> Like as soon as you went to this, I'm like, okay, we're 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 taking a look at a Fujiwara like New Japan, All Japan in the '90s. Like I feel like I'm watching Mr. Fuji or like Mr. Saito. Like in All Japan, I'm like, here we go. And for those who do not recall, that's big Japanese wrestling in the '90s, a war and romance, Jericho and Ultima Dragon. Oh my goodness! But yeah, you come back with the strikes. Okay, here we go. We're lifting her up. You know you dealing with it. The X Factor. Boom. <laughs> All right, as we take a pause here, first of all, the littlest things pop you, folks. And I've said this many a times, but we're going to get into this. You pull out the X factor. And here's my thing. Like, when you think of women's wrestling around the time, like, I remember the Ruthless Aggression games, like the SmackDown versus Raw 06 and 07. Like, almost every woman had an X factor finisher because it was so simple and simplistic. But X Pac being the originator, like, I love the fact that you pulled out the, the X factor. And I'm going to say this right now with the repertoire moves that you do have now from 2001 to 2023 in your revolution, man. Are we going to get more of an X factor coming at you, man? Because, like I said, that was a sweet x factor yeah i've been doing a three person x factor or two person x factor with the lost treasures depending on if it's all three of us tagging or just me and joe or me and matt um but yeah i've been doing those there's a couple of clips of it there's a pretty gnarly one i we did to brooke havoc i felt so bad we, we just planted her completely on her face i'm surprised she's still alive First, I'm going to say this right now. You, man, you talk about Brooke Havoc up in here. First of all, you all two had a great match doing your damn thing on the Indies. But I got to say, first and foremost, it's like a blood feud, man. Like you take the title from you and then you just you come back and you X Factor and everything like that is probably if you've not seen the feud between this one over here and Havoc. Y'all were truly wreaking Havoc, pun intended, up in here. That, that was that was a that was a hell of a match. That was that was like going at the jugular, man. It was like a duking up in here. Like y'all two did not like each other, but it was great for entertainment wise, right? Yeah. Oh, totally. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. The crowd that's, loved it. They were super into it. But that's another one. Like we mentioned Brittany Brooks earlier on the LFC podcast, but it's like Brooke Havoc is another one who's on the rise. I know she did some AEW work trained by Cody Rhodes in the Nightmare Factory. Like that's another one on the rise, man. 
Oh yeah, she's great. She is. Um, she just she got the you know the lucha moves and um, you know she's just super easygoing, uh, super fun to be around. Does her cute little cosplay stuff with Hood Slam. It's fun. <laughs> That's what it's all about, folks. Fun. And here's what's fun now, because you're about to get the upper hand as we get back into the column test here. Okay, she, you're upset now. Like, you're coming back. You're tired of the strikes. You're tired of the kicks. I'm coming for you. And just boom. Like, okay, now she's coming back trying to strike, trying to get up like it's Jeff Hardy and The Undertaker in the ladder match, trying to fight her way out of this. And <laughs> got the ground game here with like a body scissors type vibe here. Like again, oh, yeah. like y'all focused on the friggin' like the body scissors and the takedowns here. What I loved about it, like everything. I mean, you tried to go for like what was this like another armbar, like almost like a choke. I felt like we were going like dragon sleeper territory here. Yeah. Oh like, yeah, the fullest of Nelson. The fullest of Nelsons here now. Yes, like the low full Nelson. Look up Chris Masters. No, but the fact of the matter is, from this gate, like you can't get out. I loved it. I loved it. Like really simple, simplistic. Like that stuff just makes you smile. Right to the full Nelson. Yep. Around yeah, this is the debut the of the Fullest of Nelsons, which I totally, right yeah. that, I just was doing whatever. And then it became a part of my new set. I haven't done it lately. Wow. I need to do it more. So that was the end of the round. Now we're back in it, man. Oh, my goodness. Oh, Come back to that arm here. Hammerlock City over here. I locked her hammer pretty hard. See the way she has that left but arm she elbowed me pretty hard. Yeah. My goodness, not. <sighs> what I like about it too is as well, a lot of people, I will say this for a debut, because there were a lot of great debuts yeah, this yeah, night. Exactly. Like you coming on, I got to say this, first of all, you're really like third on the card. And I mean, you would just come off of seeing Sheena and Shay, and we had seen a lot of like great stuff here going into this. So where you were positioned, it really made for a good spot on the card. Now she's back to mountain, folks. Here we go. There we go. Firing off big right hand from the top. It's been back and forth in this position, but right now, Checkerelli, the newcomer, in complete control. She decides to switch off and attack that arm once again. She continues to attack the arm. Interesting decision there. She had complete control in mount. Now she's looking for the submission. That allows Payne to turn to her knees to stand. Did that back off here. Oh, oh, big okay. big <laughs> My apologies for pausing here. You know what that was that I liked? I'm going to put this out here, folks. When I see that kick, I immediately back to my TNA days. That was legit Angelina Love Botox injection is what that was, folks. For those who have not seen Angelina Love, the beautiful people, early TNA knockouts champion. That was a little Botox injection with us. That was a bicycle kick, the pump kick. This one pulling out friggin' Dragon Whip, Shelton Benjamin, and then we went straight to Angelina Love. Got to put that over, man, the pump kick. It's a simple thing. It's a simple thing. I'm sorry. No, it's fine. I'm a kicker. <laughs> but you see where I'm going with that with the Botox injection, Angelina yes. Love. Okay. All right. I see where you're going. My, my TNA knockout fandom for, aside, let's get back to the bout. The knockouts are great. It's a great thing to be they a part of. It's a great fandom right to be part of. Did you see also that Tracy Brooks got into the dog on Hall of Fame, the original knockout? Now, if there's anyone that deserves it, like it's her, right? Oh, yeah, for sure. Oh, my goodness. Now we talk about this. Like, she's coming at you, man. Hooking the arm here. Uh, trying to pull my hair, you little cheater. Pull that hair. That right away. She my said, goodness. Oh, sorry. Let me get out of that one. All the way to her feet. Hey, needs to get something going here. Late in the third and final round. It has been all Checkerelli. Oh, big reversal there. My head did not feel good. Oh, oh God, yeah. This is where I thought it was oh, over. This is where I thought she had me. Oh, Backbreaker oh, city. Backbreaker right there. Look at that. If you can cross the arms like you had the rights here, man, going yeah. to have the abdomen. Do you want to make sure I wasn't going to punch her or anything? Oh. It was smart, though, man. She could turn it to easily a bow and arrow, but she got you. She got you, man. Oh, my goodness. Pull my hair again. She was vicious, man. I mean, again, this was Veronica's second. This was Veronica's second fight, and she did not hold back. She was ready. Referee Paul Allen is watching closely as the punches are being delivered. Oh, and that was it. Saved by the bell, and my goodness. All right, here comes yours truly in the ring, about to make that announcement. All right. We just got to put this over, and again, sorry, pause for the cause here, folks. Full disclosure here, and I'm going to say this because people got confused on what my Halloween outfit was. I was a mobster, like something out of the untouchables. Because I kept people asking me if it was like Beetlejuice. I'm like, no. I mean, I... <laughs> 
And I'm like, first of all, I love Beetlejuice, but like, it was so funny, like going into my costume before this. And I love Sean to death. Shout out to Sean. He's like, it was a Halloween show. You know, maybe you could wear something Halloween. I'm like, because in my mind, you know, ring announcer, maybe a little suit and tie, maybe a little button down looking nice. Looks maybe some nice little shoes. I'm thinking like the old like school, like Michael Buffer, Bruce Buffer, like let's get ready to rumble type of vibe here. That's where my mind was going. But Sean put that Halloween touch. I'm like, OK, so where I am in Myrtle Beach, folks, is a place called Imaginations. And Imaginations has different type of costumes from everything. You can put face paint and everything. And this was the one that stuck out to me. And I got to say, probably one of my favorite things to ever wear was this uh, this mobster attire. I mean, I had to get dressed for the season. So I got to say, it was a pain in the ass getting in that ring because I was afraid I was going to trip over my pants. But I made sure everything was nice and smooth. So just had to give a little commentary on the outfit. So, I mean, I think I held up pretty well, you know, from this two years ago with the mobster attire, you know? For sure, for sure. All righty. had the fedora, that would have. You know what it was? I, I th- almost had the fedora, but the problem is it was so goddamn hot up in there in the ring. I don't need to be sweating out my hair, you know what I'm saying? Just glistening like I'm friggin' Edward and friggin' Twilight up in here, you know? Just the friggin' glow <laughs> coming off me like I'm a dog on glowing vampire. Oh, my goodness. But, yes. Anyway, back, back to the bout. Here we go. Announcement's about to be made. It was very warm. I do remember that. Hot as hell, man. But I got to say, wouldn't trade it for the world. It's entertainment up in here. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, this contest has come to a unanimous decision. And your winner, representing the blue team, Laura the <laughs> I was so shocked. The yeah, shock on your yeah, face. There's no way. <laughs> All right, here we go. We're walking. We're ready. We're doing the damn thing. Waiting. Oh, she's pissed. She's not happy. No, she was not. Bias ass I thought she with that backbreaker. I thought she did too. Unanimous oh, decision. Man. Your debut at LMC. And may I win the victory? I feel amazing, Vegas. Once more, congratulations to your winner, Laura the Adventurous Chicorelli. There we go. Emphasis. There's the debut. Oh my Perhaps, goodness! Yeah, I can I can understand Payne's frustration. I, I, I can it. understand the frustration. I, I didn't it. see it clearly as a, as a unanimous. So but that's uh, one of those ones, you know, you leave it in the hands of judge. Yeah, I think Tommy said it came down to one point on this podcast, right? Yes. So I'm going to say this first and foremost. I'm glad you brought his name up. So Veronica Payne at the end of that says bias ass judges. So if anybody wants to say it, it's all Tommy Bell's fault. Let's just put it out there. It's all. <laughs> if Veronica, if you're looking at someone to blame. It's all Tommy Bell's fault. That's all you need to know. He's a bald guy. He likes to draw. He was the second sharp dress man at the at the at the FSW arena, if you will. It's all Tommy Bell's fault. No, but uh, man, watching that back first and foremost, man, the dragon whip. I totally forgot where you're Shelton Benjamin ain't no stopping me now. The backbreakers, the backstabbers. Punching and kicking, more punching and kicking. We start out with a snapmare first and foremost, man. I was ready. I was hooked. You had me already at there. I felt like I was going back to Jericho Malenko and Benoit Guerrero in the friggin' ECW arena, for God's sake. But that's the thing, man. We start out slow. We build it up. That's the purpose of entertainment in the show. I got to say, two years later, still holds up one of my favorite debuts. And the subtlety, intricacy, and nuance, your face. After I announced your winner by unanimous decision, Laura the Adventurous Ceccarelli. So that also holds up still. Like your face also stands out. It just like I won. What? <laughs> like, I yeah. Won. Yeah. I was so shocked. I was like, what? That's not right. <laughs> Veronica was also shocked. Now she took to Instagram after this, folks. Veronica painted and she's like, I was robbed. And I'm like, Oh, someone's not happy. But yeah, no, there's a there's a there's an infamous shot if I could find it. There's an infamous shot of the one the VP, if you will, out there just not happy. Not happy. <laughs> happy yeah, States. no. She she was out there saying it was the Vegas screw job. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Veronica screwed Veronica. Anyway, no, I think I digress. <laughs> But here's the thing, too, like for a debut, and I'll say it to you straight up and down, like six o'clock really held up. It was a great debut at a booty camp. I mean, that whole entire night was really great. I'm going to say this right now. If anybody has not watched back LFC 35 booty camp three, well, you should because it's Halloween season, folks. If there's anything you want to watch on Halloween, go back to LFCfights.com and watch our booty camp special. First of all, first ever show that we did on Halloween, booty camp 3D. And I got to say from you, from Bella Madison and Bella Rockefeller, from Sheena and Shay, from Bella and Veronica Valentine, from Velcana, who would 
Well, we're not going to spoil that ending, but Volcana was not who she says she was against uh, La Scorpia, La Scorpia being unmasked, so to speak. So it was a very interesting show. Like the Lucha Landre, like it was something you've never seen. And I got to say, it still holds up. How do you feel watching that back? Uh, I, yeah, I feel great. Um, I'm less mean to myself watching it back <laughs> than I did the first time. The first time I was like, oh, why did I do that? Or why did I do that? Or why did I do that? But like, I watch it back more and it's like, okay. That was that was pretty good. I will give myself that. <laughs> well, I mean, I think we're always very critical of ourselves from like our first matches to where we are. And I mean, that's just us as people. We're very critical. But but watching that back, I mean, first of all, just everything that is really good about a match or anything, the storytelling and just the roller coaster ride. Like, I think from the previous two bouts, like Sheena and Shay had the ground game going. I mean, you saw a lot of stuff from that situation, and then here y'all are as we kept going into it. Like, a lot of them were hard hitting and back breaking, but this was literally hard hitting and back breaking. But I think, like I said, where you were positioned on the card to where we were built, it worked. It works. Like I said, can't give enough kudos to everybody involved at LFC 35 Booty Camp 3D. I'm going to say this in your future. I look forward to seeing you back whenever that is because I know you're going to kill it in your second bout. You're undefeated, man. You're the Bianca Belair of LFC. That's you're true. undefeated. That's true. I keep I keep checking my email, waiting for Sean to email me. So Send her the email, man. That's what I'm saying. Send in the email. Send but. me the email. I'm ready. I'm ready to defend my undefeated streak. Jesus, you're like SpongeBob now with your I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. One and uh, <laughs> Oh my goodness. Well, that was a look back, a great look back at LFC 35 Booty Camp 3D with the one and oh Lauren the Adventurous Checkarelli, aka Lara Frazier. And man, still holds up. Check out LFCfights.com for more information about further events. The latest event up there is LFC 37 Back to the Mansion, which took place on Valentine's Day of 2023. A lot more stuff to come. Be on the lookout and uh, be on the lookout for more great action and great events, which you can go back and watch. Why would you not want to watch this face, folks? Let's be honest with you. You got the mobster over here with my mob attire, not Beetlejuice. And you got the witch over here with her green and in her hat, which I'm going to say this right now before we even get closing out here. Besides the subtlety, intricacy and nuances of faces after your shocked victory. Um you make a face when you're in the camera. You're just like, eh. I felt like literally I was watching like an old school like corn or grunge video where they all make the faces and stuff. Like you, I, you were, you looked like you were about to, you know, bounce in the mosh pit for God's sake. Throw your hands up. That's what that was. That's what I felt like with that face, man. Just that, eh. like you sticking your tongue out and just like, eh. you know what I'm saying? It's a little things. It's a little thing. Yeah. Well, I did. I used to go to a lot of like rock concerts and stuff, and I would definitely frequent the mosh slash circle pits. So, you know, that's kind of how I would get myself hyped. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. For sure. Out of that. Okay. Fair enough. Well, I like your style nonetheless. And I think you all can like all of our styles. LFCfights.com. Check it out. This is another edition LFC podcast, special edition. Watch along. Lauren the Adventurous Checkerelli. Laura Frazier. 1 0. Undefeated. Bring her back. Now. Yes. <laughs> Send that email. You've got mail. I email me, Sean. <laughs> that concludes another edition of the LFC podcast. Email her. And we're done. Email me. Fight, fight, fight. Gonna kick some.